was a very wealthy businessman. He was a newspaper publisher and he was a politician in the early 1900s. And he invested a fortune in trying to find all sorts of artwork from around the world and treasures from the around the world. One day, uh, William found a description of some super valuable art uh, stuff. And, uh, and so he thought, man, I gotta have this stuff. So he sent his guys out to locate where this artwork is at. He sent them across the, the globe, really. They looked around, they spent months searching for this stuff. And then one day, one of the agents reported that they had found this treasure that he was looking for. They said they found it. You ready for this? In William's own warehouse. He had it all along. He was frantically searching for it and spending a lot of money to try to get the people to find it for him. And he had it in his own warehouse. And I thought about that. You know, I thought about how many times we search for stuff. We're searching for joy. We're searching for fulfillment. We're searching for something. And we're looking all over the place to try to find it. When all along, it is in our own warehouse. It is right there for us to actually grab. Let me explain by looking at our scripture here again this morning from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. This is what it says. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that your eyes the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I want you to understand something, that you have riches. You have riches in God that you just need, really need to tap into. The first riches that we have is riches in knowing. Verse 17 that says, so that you may know him better. You know, there, the atheist claimed that there is no God for us to know. I said this before, I have a, had a great book called Why God Does Not Believe in Atheists. And again, I don't know where it is, but it's a great book talking about the fact that atheism makes no sense when you really think about it. The atheist says there is no God to know. The agnostic says that if there is a God, we cannot not know him. And Paul says, man, you are so wrong. He said, he said, man, I met God. I spent time with God. He said, I spent time with him through his son, Jesus. I actually saw him and wow, what a meeting that was. What an encounter that was. Jesus changed everything for Paul and he can change everything for you as well. There is riches in knowing God. Someone says to know God personally is salvation. To know him increasingly is sanctification. To know him perfectly is glorification. I would like to add here, getting to know him on a daily basis is satisfaction. It's illumination. It's preservation. And that honestly, that is money. That is incredible riches. When we begin to get to know who God is and develop a relationship with him. Stop and give this some thought here for a moment. The all-knowing, all-powerful creator of the universe has chosen to reveal himself to us. And, and even beyond that, he has chosen to want to be known by us, giving us an opportunity to have a relationship with, with you. Stop and think about the blessing that is in that, that you are loved dearly and that God wants a relationship with you. That, that is rich, folks. And those are riches we need to tap into. Secondly, when we think about the riches we have, is the riches of calling. Verse 18, it says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I don't know if you knew this, but the term church comes from two Greek words, which mean to be called 
out. See, we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, as it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We have called to belong to Jesus, Romans 1, 6. We have called to be in a fellowship with God's Son, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. We have called into a life of peace, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. You got to check these verses out. They are so worth looking into. I love what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 13. He says, God planned for them to be like his son, and those he planned to be like his son, he also, what, called, and those he called, he also made right with them, and those he made right, he also glorified. God has called you. He has called you and me to have a, a relationship with him, but he's called us into a place of hope. Paul is saying here, man, we've got hope in God. It's not a wishful thinking, like a hopeful, hopefully we'll get what we want. Hopefully the churches will be open sometime soon. Hopefully we can get back to normality by the summer. Who knows if that's going to happen? Maybe that's wishful thinking. But the truth of the hope that God has given to us is that he's given us assurance for the future. Uh, I, I, he has made it very clear that we can depend upon him. I read about a very uh, a nervous airline passenger who was who was pacing back and forth in a waiting room, waiting for his flight. There was a bad weather outside, and and he was kind of wondering, oh man, how are things gonna go when I get up on that plane? And and as he was pacing back and forth, he paced by a vending machine, and this vending machine offered life insurance and life insurance for $100,000 for only $3. So he thought, man, that's a no-brainer. So he put in his three bucks, got this, got this life insurance, and, and he still had some, some time. So he thought, man, you know what I'm going to do? I, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to go sit down, and I'm going to uh, have a little bit of dinner and, and enjoy a few moments before I get onto this plane. Hopefully, I can get home safely. So he went into the airport uh, dining area. He found a Chinese restaurant, enjoyed a little bit of a dinner, and he opened up his fortune cookie at the end of his meal. And the fortune cookie said this, your recent investment will pay big dividends. And uh, he thought, oh my goodness, his recent investment, of course, was his life insurance. Well, listen, I just want to make something very clear here. We don't have a fortune cookie to tell us what our future will be like, but we do not have to panic because our life insurance will will kick in someday and that life insurance is that we will be with Jesus for all eternity. He has called you. He has committed himself to you as he wants us to commit ourselves to him. And his calling is sure. It's not a wishful thinking like a fortune cookie. But his calling is sure that he will come through for us as we trust him from day to day. He has made promises to us. He knows us and he wants us to know him and he's called us into a living hope. Paul says, I pray that your eyes would be open, that you would understand the riches you have in him. We're going to talk more about that next week and continue on to understand these riches that we have through Christ. But for now, I just want you to consider. I want you to consider, first of all, that you have riches in knowing the creator of the universe, that he wants you to know him, and he wants to do to, to show himself to you. And I encourage you, take time in getting to know him. Secondly, I want you to understand the riches you have in the calling he's placed on your life, the direction he wants to give you, the ways he wants to lead you. But you've got to be open. You've got to be listening. You've got to be giving yourself over to him. We don't have to look high and low for treasures like Mr. Hurst did in the illustration I started up, up with, but we can know that we have treasures at our fingertips if we just simply tap into the blessings that God has given us. Father, I thank you for your word here again this morning. I thank you, Lord, that there are incredible blessings in you. I pray that we would live in those blessings. We would keep our eyes focused on you. We would follow you, get to know you, and listen to you and that calling you put upon our life. And as we do so, Holy Spirit, 
Would you guide us into those great places where we discover more and enriching things from you and Lord that our daily walk would be marked by your divine intervention and blessing. Thank you for all my listeners here this morning. I pray give them a good rest of this week. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thanks again for joining me here this morning. By all means, join me next week as we carry on and look at the riches that we have in God. For now, enjoy your day and please tap into those riches as best way you can. God bless you.